Hi, I'm Amy Wolf with ViewCast. When the Nashville Predators take the ice, it's all about strength, precision, and teamwork. But when a beloved former coach with the Preds started feeling the harsh symptoms of Parkinson's disease, he turned to a team here at Vanderbilt. Coach Brent Peterson allowed ViewCast Carol Bartu and Mike Todd inside the operating room to witness his deep brain stimulation surgery. He wants the world to see how this dramatic option brought back the gift of movement. And we've got a fight on the other side of the ice now. It's Brent Peterson. Brent Peterson's reputation in the NHL was as a dependable, hard-nosed centerman who loved a good joke. But nine years ago, Brent's family noticed subtle changes. My wife noticed it a year before. She noticed my arm didn't swing when I, when I walked. And she says, there's something wrong with you. The smooth and loose physical grace that defined Brent's career on ice was slowly disappearing. When I was diagnosed with Parkinson's, I sort of knew there'd be a day when I had to get off the ice. So he's, he's not playing? Medication helped, so Coach Petey kept on working. He started a nonprofit to support Parkinson's research and advocated for hope. Then last year, for the first time, he fell on the ice and knew it was time to take the next big step. This is going to be great, and then it's going to really help. And the next step was a big one in this Vanderbilt operating room. You got the number one, good. Neurosurgeon Dr. Peter Conrad, neurologist Tom Davis, and a team of experts prepared to implant two deep brain stimulators. Okay, so at this point we actually have uh, exposed the surface of the brain and created just a little puncture through the tissue to um, pass those probes down. Next one we go to three below target. Thin wires are carefully guided into Peterson's brain. You already got a probe down there? Yeah. Uh, not just one, but all eight of them. Wow. Peterson remains awake to reassure doctors that he can still think and speak. The wires must settle into precisely the right spot within a walnut-sized section of the brain that controls movement, the part ravaged by Parkinson's disease, battered by a storm of misfiring electrical impulses. The probes, shown here as yellow streaks, put out a tiny countercurrent that calmed the misfiring, much like a pacemaker within the brain. Once the perfect spot is located, his hands go from frozen to fluid in the flick of a switch. Take this finger and tap like this one. That's, How's that feel? That feels good. Yeah, that's near 100. Good. Coach Petey returns right on the table, complete with the bad jokes. And he goes, well, there's a secret. On your 30th wedding anniversary, you take her on a trip to the, the Mediterranean and all over Italy and all over the place. Well, what do you do on your 50th? You go get her. <laughs> <laughs> and a loose and graceful toss of a ball is a tempting preview of things to come. But first, he must heal. Hey, hey, hey. Well, he's all done. Good to see you. Yeah. You good? Yeah, he did good. He kept it clean. Yeah, I think he's throwing <laughs> balls at you guys. <laughs> when Brent and his wife Tammy return to Vanderbilt two weeks later, it's without benefit of medication or device. It's a necessary evil, as Peterson shuffles in, uncomfortably frozen, wearing the mask-like face of Parkinson's disease, until neurologist Tom Davis gradually warms up the deep brain stimulators for the first time since surgery. I can just feel it, just, just coming out of the, the, dead, the, dead, the dead zone that I usually am in. Your face is coming to life, too. Is it? Mm -hmm. You can see the face, hey, the expression on my face is just blank. <laughs> it's like trouble. He will still need some medication, but with the pacemaker in his brain, Brent Peterson will again know a kind of a smooth and loose grace. Remember I was tough one before? One he hopes will inspire others that there is hope with Parkinson's disease. 
It's way better, right? It's the beginning of good things to come. It's worth all the headaches and the short hair and the, it's worth, it was worth it, very much so. For ViewCast, I'm Carol Bartu. Vanderbilt is one of the few centers in the country to break the surgery into four stages over several weeks, so patients like Brent never have to spend more than four hours in the operating room. Brent Peterson is so dedicated to the work Vanderbilt is doing that funds raised by his foundation go to Parkinson's research right here at Vanderbilt. For more information, go to petersonforparkinsons.org. <laughs> We all know smoking is horrible for your health and no one should smoke. A Vanderbilt researcher found something inside nicotine itself might help senior citizens with memory loss. Dr. Paul Newhouse had a group of non-smokers with an average age of 76 who already had some very early signs of dementia wear a nicotine patch. Dr. Newhouse said while nicotine doesn't do any good for most people, it may help some who already have mental impairment. There's much more to this study on vanderbilt.edu. Search nicotine and memory. Hear about the latest advances in Alzheimer's disease research from a Vanderbilt doctor and researcher. Go to vanderbilt.edu and search Alzheimer's. Here is my assistant beaker carrying a lighted blowtorch. He will now show you how impossible it is to ignite the fireproof paper in this basket. <laughs> Many students dream of the chance to someday do important scientific research. Often that research is reserved for those who've already graduated, but not here at Vanderbilt. Inside Vandy reporter Harrison Dreves takes us into a special lab that specifically hires undergrads. And here's why. Joe was just the scientist scientist. He, he was just totally absorbed in research and he's just finished his PhD at University of Pennsylvania. Uh, as far as I can remember. Laura, on the other hand, I used to joke. People said, we've got to get Laura to go to graduate school. And I said, no, I want her to go to medical school. That's her plan, and I'm going to need her to be my doctor one day. So I'm the lab manager, which means <laughs> um, my unofficial title is lab den mother. I've forgotten now who came up with that, but it's a little bit of, um, it's a lot of helping the students learn how to do the different techniques. It's um, ordering supplies when they're needed. It's uh, running everybody's life. But this is really like real life exper experience where you're making, you really are making like a hypothesis, following the procedure, turning around and saying, oh, I did this wrong and going back and doing something else. And then, you know, we get to work with people who have a lot of experience in the field and they give us a ton of feedback and help us out. So it's, it's extremely helpful. It's really interesting. It's, it's fun even. So it's a good sign. <laughs> Today we have six undergraduates, one graduate student, so it is essentially counting me, five senior people and six undergraduates. So the undergraduates are the bigger part of the lab. It's a small lab, I prefer a small lab. I'm doing honors research right now, so I come in basically whenever I don't have class. Now I'm going to uh, put them in culture so I get a lot, so they uh, multiply and I get a lot of cells. Um, and then I go on to purify the protein from the cells. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm just putting them in a starter culture. One of the things that we really pride ourselves on in this lab is we don't give our students projects that don't matter. Um, we have a lot of undergraduate students and we feel very strongly about undergraduate education and so the projects that our undergraduates do are real projects. You can see more of this video story on vanderbilt.edu. Search Stubbs Lab. For ViewCast, I'm Amy Wolf.